Hello, welcome. I'm Sifu David. And today we're gonna do the Bruce Lee speed punching exercise with a candle flame punch. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this face mask is to make sure that you guys know that I'm not blowing out the candle. I'm actually just using the air force and pressure that's created from my fist. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that, how you can train it, why we train it, so that you can have even more powerful and faster punches, just like Bruce Lee. And yes, we are giving away these free DVDs, accelerated Wing Chun System Quick Start DVD, normally retailing for 129 bucks, but enter the contest. All you need to do is to subscribe, click the notification bell, and like and comment on this video, and you'll enter automatically into the draw. Every week, we're gonna give away a free video, so good luck. Now, you've probably seen a lot of videos like this on YouTube, where the guy in karate, they go like this, and they have this big shirt on, on a gi. So basically, they're creating wind with all the fabric that's on their arm, okay? And you see that they're coming from this distance. So there's a lot more distance, okay? But the key to this is you wanna train it so good that you can do it in a very short distance, maybe even one foot away, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that. But first of all, we're gonna just train it from a further distance, okay? And not a short distance. Once you get better at it, you can do it at a shorter distance. Now the key is not to use the back of your arm, this is just basically swinging your arm and that's easy, you can easily take a little frame just like that, you don't need any speed. Okay? So we're not doing a practice, which you see a lot, if this is easily take out the candle, just you don't even need speed, you can do that, take out the candle, okay? You're using the force, the, the, the air pressure generated from the front of your fist, and you can do it well. That will add the focus and the speed and the snappiness, like a whip-like punch, and a whip-like attack effect on all your punches. All right, so like I said, the reason I'm wearing this is so that, you know, I'm not blowing out the candle. I can't blow out the candle, okay? But I do have to exhale in order to get the most um, speed in my punch. So make sure that when you're training, just so you know that you're doing it properly, you either cover your mouth, you can still blow it. Best is just get one of these, okay? You can't blow it up. So that when you do exhale, when you do, the punch is not affecting the candle, okay? So I'm just gonna do it one more time. All right, that's how you do it. But it's hard for me to talk in the video while having this on. So um, I'll just take it on and off as we go, okay? So how we do this is you wanna make sure you go into the straight line. So just practice from here to candle, slowly going from the straight line to here. Straight line. Straight line. So make sure you're first going in the straight line, number one. Number two is keep your hand relaxed and then tense your hand at the last second. So it's relaxed, relaxing, my hand's pretty relaxed. And at the last possible second, I make a fist, okay? So it's relaxed and at the last possible second, make a fist. This is what creates the snap at the end of the punch. And this is what engages your joint power too, like I explained in the video, how to punch harder, part two. We're talking about joint power, is when you tense up and use the power of your joints, elbow joint, shoulder joint, wrist joints, knuckle joints, to get that extra snap. Okay, and number three, you wanna be able to be relaxed, okay? As soon as you tense up, let's say I'm tensing up my muscles, it actually slows down your punch, it creates all the energy to be stuck in your muscles. So you want to have a whip-like motion with your hand. Okay, so a review. Number one, create a straight line to the candle. Number two, tense and make a fist at the last possible moment. Number three is to relax while you do it. Let's show you how to do that as you practice at home. Here's an bonus tip. Remember when I said exhaling. Exhaling lets you relax your muscles as you're punching, okay? So as you're punching, you're gonna exhale. Okay? But just to show you I'm not actually blowing it out, I'm gonna cover my face. Okay? Now, if, once you can get pretty consistently 
to be able to take out the candle at this distance. Now what you want to do is to go only halfway and start your punch from here. Okay, so before I started from here, so you have full distance here. Okay, full distance. Next I want you to start halfway. So measure distance, start halfway, and then take out the punch. Okay, this is going to be harder for you because now you don't have as much time to build out speed. So you need to be able to build out speed in a very short distance, which is very important in Wing Chun. And it's very important uh, in Jeet Kune Do too, because that's what Bruce Lee does. He does a one inch punch. He's able to create tremendous power in his tiny, tiny space. So this will help you train that. That's going in half distance. Okay, so you can do it well, you can do it half distance. Now we're gonna do it at quarter distance. Even closer, I'm not even sure I can even do this. Let's see if I can. Full distance, half distance, quarter distance. Okay, that was a tough one, but I did it. So practice at home and see how well you can practice this. Start a long distance to get closer and closer to do it. Welcome back. So you're probably wondering, okay, so you can blow the can up with your fist. Who cares, right? Well, I'm gonna show you how to use it in real self-defense application and how it can add power and speed and effectiveness to all your attacks and all your punches. So let's show you how to use it right now. Remember what I said about Bruce Lee's inch punch? Inch punch from here, right? Okay, so what's the point of using an inch punch? Why would you pose like this and then punch like this? Well, the point is not that you're gonna punch somebody that close. The point is that you can develop something called Chun Ging in Chinese. Um, all martial arts have something called Chun Ging, especially in Wing Chun and also Ji Kundo. What's Chun Ging? Chun Ging means inch power. Okay, so I'm able to generate a lot of force in a very short distance. And the reason we want to do that is because Wing Chun operates in a very tight situation, very tight close quarters. Okay, Wing Chun won't use punches in this distance. They're going to use spear thrust. They're going to use kicks. Okay, but once you get in here, this is where Wing Chun is very, very powerful because you can use your strapping techniques and you can use short punches. So if you cannot generate force in a short distance, then why would you be in such a close range? You don't want to be this close, okay? So you want to be able to generate a lot of force in a close distance in order to make Wing Chun more effective, okay? So this is why we train our close range punches, okay? The reason is because I want to go from here to punch him from here, from here to here, from here to here. I'm not going to be punching him from here. Like in boxing, it's good because you get to generate power with all this distance. Distance lets you bring power, okay? But in Wing Chun, we want to stay close because we want to be able to manipulate the hands and keep them down and keep them manipulated and keep them in control so that we can launch into attacks like this. So how can I generate power in such a short distance, even knock up power in such a short distance? You need to be able to use your Chun Ging. Why is Chun Ging so powerful? It's because Number one, it's harder for me to miss. Let's say that I'm punching from far away. He can move his head. There's a lot more time for him to move out of the way, right? But let's say I start my punch from here. Now he has less time to dodge the attack, okay? Also, it's harder to see coming, right? If he's all the way from here, he can easily slip. He sees it coming, he can block it. He can slip, he can block, he can slip, he can move, whatever, he can counter. But at this distance, very hard for your eyes to be able to react that quickly to a punch that fast in such a short distance, okay? So why we use such a short punch in Wing Chun is because now we rely not on the eyes, we rely on sensitivity, okay? We rely on feeling because your tactile reflexes are faster than your visual reflexes. So I'm just relying on the feel, which allows me to punch 
And in Wing Chun, we have a saying that goes, Lat Sao Tik Tong, which means upon disengagement, rush forward. So the default technique in Wing Chun is this chain, chain blast. If I don't feel anything blocking it, I'm going to be blasting. Using my short punches in a very fast consecutive motion. So that it's very hard for him to, and your attacker to, be able to react to all those punches in such a short distance. And if you add the training to add power to those punches, you'll be a force to reckon with. So that's a lesson on Bruce Lee's speed punching exercise with the candle flame, candle flame training to enhance your speed, enhance your snappiness, whip-like motion of your attacks, and also increase your chun ging or in power. Stay tuned for the next videos and check it out on my playlist with more Wing Chun techniques and more self-defense tips. If you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button, but also click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you get all the latest and greatest Wing Chun techniques and lessons that I'm putting out almost on a daily basis. So make sure you comment, tell me what you think about this video. What else you want to see? What do you want to learn? What do you think is the best technique in this video? Share it with your friends. So we'll see you in the next lesson. This is Steve David. See you soon.